Hello and welcome to another mod showcase. Today we're looking at the Ancient Legends mod. This is a mod for Forge 1.20.1. This mod adds tons of new biomes, bosses, structures, armor, etc. This is a very big mod and there's a lot to go over, so this is going to be a bit longer video than normal. And I'll have chapters around the video so you can skip around to a specific part. So let's keep this intro short and we'll get on with the showcase. So first we're going to go over the biomes in this mod. And our first one is the Lush Forest. This biome is like an enhanced version of the Dark Oak Forest. The trees are taller and have glowberry vines hanging from them. And a lot of the ground is made up of moss and azalea. And these these little glowing mushrooms that spawn on the ground. There's also a bunch of these mossy cobblestone boulders, but they seem to spawn almost everywhere with this mod installed. Uh, one more thing, all of the leaves in most of these biomes are made up of these dense leaves. However, they don't really look any different from normal leaves. Our next biome is the Wild Forest. This biome is kind of the same thing as the Lush Forest, but it uses mostly oak trees instead of dark oak. So yeah, there isn't really a lot to talk about here, but here is some views of it. And next up is the Wild Taiga. This biome is, again, similar to the last two, but still different. This is an improved and much more detailed version of the Taiga biome. But all of the wood in this biome is dark oak instead of spruce like a normal Taiga. Once again, not a lot to say about it. And the next is the wild birch forest. It's just, you should know by this point with these, it's it's the birch forest, but more detailed. Again, there's not really much more I could say about these. It's, it's just the same thing. But that's the last of our wild biomes, because next up is the spider forest. This is a biome that is made up entirely of these spider nest blocks. A new block that has similar properties to soul sand when you walk on it and is meant as a home for spiders. You can find big webs throughout this biome and all the trees that spawn here have these really white leaves. Overall, just not a great biome to traverse through. And next we have the Ancient Steps biome. This is a definitely odd looking biome. There's not many trees and most of the ground is made up of podzil. And the rest that isn't is just this really brown looking grass. And any trees that do spawn here have this very brown tint to the leaves. Next and very similar we have Ancient Rocky Steps. It's literally the Ancient Steps biome, but more rocky. Yep, that, that's about it really. And our last biome is the Toxic Waste Biome. It's basically the same thing as the Spider Forest. So yeah, we're gonna move on. So for our next section, we're gonna talk about the basic mobs in the mod. This is only regular mob, this doesn't include any special or boss mobs, we'll be talking about them later in the video. So our first mob is the Droko. This is an alligator-like mob that lives in the oceans and is a hostile mob. It has 10 hearts and it is hostile, and when killed it will drop nothing. And next up is the Forest Spider. This is a variation of the spider that is both bigger and stronger. It does more damage and has 10 hearts of health. And you find this mob most commonly in the lush forest. And it also cannot climb walls. It will attack you no matter what time of day it is. And when killed it has the same loot table as a normal spider. And our next mob is the Pix. This is a fairy like mob that will fly around forests. It is a passive mob that when killed will drop sunflowers and enchanted dust. This is an item we will talk about later. Like my infinite abyss video you're gonna hear we'll talk about this later a lot in this video so just be prepared. And our next mob is the croak. This is a little frog do with a hat on. It is a neutral mob and it can spawn in mangrove swamps, regular swamps, or lush forests. And if you attack one all other croaks in the area will attack you. They have seven and a half hearts and when killed will drop nothing. So our next mob is the grizzly bear. This mob will spawn in any forest or plains biome. It is hostile and it has 20 hearts. And when killed, it will drop fur. We will talk about that later. And next we got the wild boar. This mob can spawn in almost any forest biome. And it is very hostile. It will attack you very rapidly. But it actually does have a 1 4th chance to not be hostile at all. This mob will also attack other animals. And you can actually tame the boar if you use any kind of meat. Once it is tamed, it can be healed with any kind of meat. It has 15 hearts and when killed it will drop leather, raw pork chops, fur, or even tusks. Which, say it with me, we'll talk about later. And next we got the giant tortoise. This mob is in fact, a giant tortoise. It can spawn in the ancient steppes biome, and it is neutral. It has 50 hearts and when killed it will drop giant tortoise shell. Honestly, I'm not going to say it anymore. If you see an item you don't recognize here, you know we'll talk about it later. And our next mob is the horned devil. This is a hostile mob that can spawn in forests. It has 15 hearts and when killed it will drop a goat horn and a totem of might, an item that when held in your offhand will give you a permanent strength 2 effect, but it will not save you from death like a normal totem will. And next up is the Asanbasum. This is a variation of a zombie. You will find it in regular Minecraft dungeons where it can replace the spawner. It's obviously hostile and has 20 hearts just like a normal zombie does, and when killed it will drop rotten flesh, bones, packed mud, iron ingot, and unholy cloth. And our second to last mob here is the Moroi. This mob is a vampire that will spawn in the wild taiga biomes. When you come close to this mob it will give you the possessed effect and will slowly pull you in. This effect makes it so you can't really move at all. 
Inu will very quickly take damage, and you can only get rid of the effect by killing the Morai. It will also play this crying baby sound for some reason. When killed, it could drop bones, unholy cloth, a blood bottle, or a token of dread. And our last mob in this section is the Naga. This is a big snake-like creature that will live in the oceans. It has 50 hit points and is hostile, and when killed, it could drop a Naga Tooth, Naga Scale, or a Naga Chop. The Naga Chop, when raw, will give 2 hunger bars, and when cooked, will give 8 hunger bars. So a very hard food source to get, but if you can get a lot of it, it's very good. So that's all of our basic mobs in this mod. Well, by basic, I just mean not boss mob. Well, now we're going to move on to the structures in this mod. Well, most of them. There's a couple that we're going to save for later, because they're a lot more important. First up is the Asanbasum spawner. Simple structure, it's just a little wood thing with a spawner in the middle. And underneath the spawner is a chest with some kind of mid loot. And our next structure is the big spooky tomb. It is exactly what the name says, it is a big spooky tomb. This is a mostly aesthetic structure, there's not really much importance to it, but there is a wither skeleton skull in the middle, so that's cool. And next up is the cave spider nest. Just this little nest thing made of nest blocks with a cave spider spawner in the inside. Not much else to it, it's just a little nest. There's a few variants of this nest, there's also one for regular spiders, forest spiders, and toxic cave spiders. They're all pretty much the same thing, just with a different spawner in the middle. And our next structure is the house in the woods. It is a simple little spruce house that you find deep into the woods. Inside is a lectern and a bunch of bookshelves. That can be pretty useful if you find this early game. There's also a bunch of different workstations inside of this house too. And there's also a chest with, again, some pretty mid loot. If you find this structure early game, it can be very good though, you can just take it as a starter house. And next up is the husk spawner. This is a kind of like mini above ground dungeon you can find. In the center there's a spawner for a husk obviously, and there's two chests like a normal dungeon but they have definitely different loot tables, and they can have some kind of okay loot. There's also another variant of this structure with a wither skeleton spawner in the middle. Even though it's another variant, it does still spawn in the overworld though. But it can be really useful having a wither skeleton spawner. Right above the spawner there's a barrel and it has some okay loot. And our next structure is the spider ruins. This is basically a bunch of ruins that are overrun by spiders. Throughout the structure there's multiple spider and cave spider spawners and obviously cobwebs too. There's a few chests as well that actually have pretty good loot and an important item we'll talk about soon. And this structure can only spawn in spider biomes. In a similar structure we have the witch ruins. A much smaller ruin structure that has a witch spawner in the middle. Well it's not really in the middle but it's there. Not much to this one, there's no chests or anything, it's just really the witch spawner in a cauldron. But can be useful for an easy witch farm. And that is all for our basic structures. As I said earlier there are a few more structures but they're a lot more important so we're going over them soon. And now we're going to move on to the token section. We're really getting into the main meat of this mod now. In this mod, there are five different of these token items, and they are all very important. They're kind of required for crafting most of the cool armors or weapons in this mod. We're going to quickly go over how you get all these tokens in this section, and then in the next few sections we'll talk about what they're properly used for. So our first and easiest of these tokens is the token of technology. This token could just be found in regular dungeon chests. You only need to find one of these, because once you find it, you can actually duplicate it. You just surround it with copper and a crafting table like this, and the same formation you would use to duplicate a smithing template. And the next token is the Venomous token. To get this token, you must find it in the Spider Ruins. This was that important item I was talking about when I was talking about this structure. You can also duplicate this one, but with diamonds. So, basically exactly like how you would dupe a smithing template. The next token is the Token of Dread. You briefly saw this earlier during the mob section. So yes, the way to get this one is that it's dropped from the Mirai. And our last two tokens here, the Token of Nature and the Heaven token, are both found in the same place. And that place is the Legendary Vault. I'm giving this structure its own session because it is easily the best and most important structure in this whole mod. And you can probably already tell that just by looking at it. And you can literally see just piles of gold blocks and iron blocks laying around. This structure is hard to find, it's always hidden under a kind of hill. But if you look for this kind of like square hill looking thing, you could usually find one underneath. There's a spawner in the middle for another mob called the Vault Guardian. This mob is hostile, has 50 health and doesn't drop anything, and its only purpose is just to protect these vaults. They are kind of difficult, so make sure you watch out for them. Kill them and break the spawner as soon as possible when you come in here. Oh yeah, and underneath those piles of gold and iron, you can sometimes find diamond blocks under there. But the main reason you're going to be here is for these chests. These chests are insane. They can basically contain any item from this mod. You'll be seeing a bunch of items here that we haven't even talked about yet, so I guess take this as a little preview for later. You can get any of the tokens here, but as far as I know, this structure is the only way to get the heaven token and the token of nature. So make sure you definitely keep your eyes open for this structure because it will save you so much time and give you stuff you can't get anywhere else. So in these next few sections, we're going to talk about the gear this mod adds, that being the tools, armor, and weapons. And we're going to start off with the tools, because that's the shortest of the three. There's only two sets of tools that this mod adds, and the first of which being silver. 
Silver comes from silver ore that is a pretty common ore found above deep slate levels. It is a very simple ore and can even be mined with a wooden pickaxe. And these tools are equivalent to iron tools. Except for the sword, which has the same durability as iron but has the same damage as stone. Oh, and I forgot to mention, when mined it will drop raw silver that you have to smelt. And like copper, even without fortune it will drop multiple. You can combine four silver ingots in a crafting table to make a silver block. These blocks are purely decorative, but they do look nice. And you can put them in a stone cutter to make stairs, slabs, fences, and trap doors. Which they all look pretty nice in my opinion. And our second set of tools is the Divium tools. Divium is a rare ore that can be found in the end. Although it is rare, it is easy to find because you can just find it on the surface. You need a netherite pickaxe to mine it, and when mined it will drop one Divium shard. Combine six of these shards in a crafting table and you'll get one Divium ingot. You can also surround an apple with eight of these shards and make two enchanted golden apples, that's cool. But the main use is for the ingot. Divium will act like an upgrade to netherite. You combine your netherite gear with a Divium ingot and a bronze gear and you get your Divium tool. And that other item you see, the bronze gear, you make that by surrounding a token of technology with bronze ingots. And to get a bronze ingot, you need a bronze block, which a bronze block is crafted with two gold ingots and two copper ingots. I know that was a lot, but those bronze gears are going to be important for a few more recipes. And no, there is no bronze ore. And you can put the bronze block in a stone cutter and make slayers, slabs, fences, and trap doors. Just like you could with silver. So that's all our tools out of the way, now we're going to move on to the armor. And for our first set of armor, we're going to continue right off the tools with the Divium armor. It's made the exact same way you make the tools, just upgrade your netherite. The stats are on screen now. Our next set of armor is the diving armor. This is the weakest and probably the first set of armor you'll get with this mod. The crafting recipes are on screen now. It requires bronze ingots, giant tortoise shells, bronze gear, and here are the stats. And our next set is the Cernano's armor. This armor is meant as an upgrade to diamond armor. The crafting recipes are on screen now. It is diamond armor surrounded by padded leather and tusks. And to make padded leather, it's just two pieces of leather and two pieces of fur. And here are its stats. And our next set is the Naga set. This is a set based off of the Naga mob. The crafting recipes are on screen now. They require Naga scales and tusks. And here are its stats. And next up is the Impious Armor. This is a vampiric-like armor set. This armor is an upgrade to diamond and is made in a smithing table. You make it by combining the diamond armor with an unholy cloth and a token of dread. And this armor has a special ability where it allows you to control undead mobs. When you right-click them when you're near you, they will actually fight other mobs for you. And if there's nothing else around you, they will just slowly take damage and die. And here is the stats of the armor. And next up is the Venomous Armor. This armor is an upgrade to netherite armor. It is made by combining netherite armor with a poisonous shard and a venomous token. The poisonous shard can be crafted like this, or it can be found in spider ruins. This armor has a special ability that any mobs that attack you will take extra poison damage. And when I say poison damage, I don't mean like the actual poison effect. I mean just like, just really, it's really just extra damage. But its armor stats are exactly the same as netherite. And our final two armor sets is actually a group of armor sets, and that's the sunrise and nightfall armor. These two sets are actually linked to another two sets of structures that we haven't talked about just yet. And that is the Sunrise and Nightfall Outposts. These are just little outpost structures that have these spawners for two new mobs, Sunrise and Nightfall Warriors. That's just these little samurai dudes here. And you get the armor by killing these mobs. The Sunrise will drop the Sunrise armor and the Nightfall will drop the Nightfall armor. And on top of the structure there's also these little loot crates. Which if you break them with an axe they will drop some loot for you. And they can give you some pretty decent loot. And in terms of the armors, while they do both look different, they're both exactly the same stat-wise. And those stats are on screen now. Also, neither of these stats can be enchanted. And that is it for the armor, so now let's move on to the weapons. We're going to start with the weaker weapons and we'll make our way up to the stronger ones. However, there are a few weapons gotten from defeating bosses, so we'll talk about them in that section. So our first weapon is the Blazing Sword. It is a relatively simple and weak weapon. It deals 3.5 attack damage and has an automatic fire aspect effect on it. So anything you hit with it will catch on fire. To craft it, it is crafted with one blaze rod and two blazing ingots. And to make a blazing ingot, it is just four blaze rods. So in reality, this thing just takes nine blaze rods to make. And our next weapon is the katana. A simple weapon that does 5.5 attack damage. And it attacks a little bit faster than a regular sword. You craft it by using two silver ingots, four iron nuggets, and one piece of red bamboo. And you make red bamboo by just combining a piece of bamboo and red dye. You can also use black bamboo, but there's no recipe for that just yet. So I don't think it's obtainable yet. So as of now, you can only use the red bamboo. There's also red and black bamboo blocks, but neither of those have a crafting recipe yet. You can find them in the Sunrise and Nightfall outpost structures. 
but as of now, I think that's the only way to obtain them. And you can also use that red bamboo to make red bamboo plates, which are crafted with red bamboo and bronze ingots, and you use those to repair the sunrise and nightfall armor. And technically there's black bamboo plates, but you cannot obtain them yet. There's also five other kinds of katanas, those being the bloody, fiery, void, frost, and dark, but I do not think any of these are actually obtainable just yet. Or not that I've seen at least. Maybe if anyone knows you can say so in the comments. But because of that, I'm not going to really talk about them much. It's also a similar weapon, which is the Cutlass, but it, it has no recipe, so I, I don't know how to obtain it. Yeah, and if anybody knows, just please say so in the comments. But now back to weapons I actually can tell you how to obtain, and that is the Void Sword. Now we're starting to get into the OP weapons. This is a very strong weapon, but also a very expensive weapon. To make it, you need four pieces of obsidian and an end rod. You also need these two items here, which is a Celestial Eye and a Celestial Ingot. These items are very expensive, so prepare yourself. The Celestial Eye is made with four enchanted dust, four eyes of Ender, and a nether star. And the Celestial Ingot is made with a Crying Obsidian, a Blazing Ingot, a Diamond, a nether star, a Celestial Eye, an End Crystal, another Diamond, a Netherite Ingot, and another Crying Obsidian. So yeah, that's very expensive. But as I said, it's a pretty powerful weapon. Damage wise, it's alright, it does 9 attack damage. But it also does have 0.9 attack speed, which is pretty slow, so I would keep that in mind when making this weapon. But its abilities are the main thing that makes it OP. Because first of all, when you're holding this in your main hand, you'll take no fall damage whatsoever. And unfortunately, it does have to be in your main hand, though. You can't just keep it in your offhand and take no fall damage all the time. And it also has an ability where you can right-click and throw an Ender Pearl. And this has no cooldown at all, so you can just spam this infinitely. And because of the no fall damage ability, you will never take damage from any of these pearls. And another benefit, it also is completely unbreakable. Which is good because if you're going through all that effort to make a sword, you should not have to worry about it breaking. And our next weapon is the Unholy Sword. This weapon is an upgrade to the Netherite Sword. You make it in the smithing table by combining a Netherite Sword with a Celestial Ingot and a Token of Dread. So yeah, another very expensive sword. It has the same attack speed as the Void Sword but does 12 damage this time. And when you right click it will possess every mob within a 100 block radius. Just like the armor set, it will make them fight for you. And our next weapon is the Tree Nan's Legacy. This one is actually an upgrade to the Iron Sword. And you make it by combining an Iron Sword and the smithing table with a piece of Oak Wood and a Token of Nature. And it does specifically have to be a piece of Oak Wood. It can't be an Oak Log or an Oak Plank, it has to be Oak Wood, which is the six sided wood. And it does have to be Oak as well. This weapon doesn't seem to have any specific abilities to it, but it is pretty strong. It does 12 attack damage and has 0.8 attack speed. So it is slow, but it also is very strong. And our next weapon is the Crusher. This is a very powerful weapon. You make it with two sticks, two iron blocks, and a totem of might. And this thing does 12 attack damage and has 0.7 attack speed. So another slow but powerful weapon. But this thing also acts as kind of like an all-in-one tool. It can quickly break dirt, stone, and wood. And when you do, it'll also break in a big area around it. So this item will be great for strip mining. And our next weapon is actually an upgrade to the Crusher. And that is the Celestial Crusher. It is made in the smithing table by combining the Crusher with a Divium Ingot and a Celestial Eye. This will do 13 attack damage and 0.8 attack speed. And this one will actually do area damage to mobs you hit. But the block breaking is the same as a normal one. Oh, and also you probably saw from the video there, but when you hit mobs with this, they will go flying. And for our last weapon of this section, that is the Heaven Sword. This is probably the best weapon in the mod. You could argue it's the Crusher, but this one does a lot more damage. This one is also an upgrade to the Iron Sword, and you make it by putting an Iron Sword, a Celestial Ingot, and a Heaven Token in the smithing table. And the stats of this weapon are insane. This thing does 20 attack damage and has 1.1 attack speed. And it's also just huge, I mean, look at it. So as I said, you could argue the crushers are better because of the block breaking, but just based off of damage, this is definitely the best weapon in the mod. And for our second to last section in this video, we're going to go over the bosses. There's five different bosses in this mod, so we're going to go over them here. Our first boss is the Dead Knight. You find this boss in its own structure called the Dead Knight Ruins, which looks like a lot of the spawner structures from earlier, and it even has a skeleton spawner in the middle. The Dead Knight is definitely the weakest boss in this mod, but he is still decently strong. He doesn't really have any special attacks or anything, and he moves pretty slow but he does do a pretty good amount of damage. And when killed, he will drop the Dead Knight Sword, a decent weapon that does 7.5 attack damage and has one attack speed. It has a special ability as to when you jump and hit, it will do area damage and will launch mobs into the air. So that's the first boss, but for the next four bosses, I have some bad news. I have absolutely no idea how you find any of these. I really wish I did, but there's just not a lot of info about this mod anywhere online. And there's really no hints in the mod that tell you how to do it. So again, if anyone knows, say in the comments. But I will still describe to you the bosses and show you what they drop. Because they are cool and do give you some good stuff. The first of these four is the Wendigo. This thing is a weird looking boss. Its design is kind of similar to the Warden, and it also makes the same noises as the Warden. However, it doesn't have a lot of special attacks either. It attacks normally by hitting you, but it does do a lot of damage. But it does run around pretty quick. 
has 150 health and when killed it will drop two totems of might. And our next boss is the Wither Wizard. The Wither Wizard is this Wither Skeleton here. It holds this Wither Staff that shoots out Wither Skulls at you. And these Wither Skulls are a lot stronger than the normal Withers. They obviously give you the Wither Effect, but they also make big explosions around you. And it does way more damage than the regular Wither does. This is definitely a very tough boss to beat. He has 200 health and when killed it will drop his Wither Staff. Which then you can shoot out those same Wither Skulls. Who will make the big explosion and Wither things around it. And it has no durability. And our next boss is the Ice Behemoth. This boss is an obviously ice based boss. When he hits you, he will throw you up in the air and he will give you the frost effect to make it so you move incredibly slowly, way more than slowness will. He has 160 health and like all these bosses does quite a bit of damage. When killed, he will drop 3 ice shards. Combine 2 of these ice shards with an ice rod, which is just crafted with 3 pieces of blue ice. And you can craft the Sword of Frost. It does 8 attack damage, it has 1 attack speed, and when you hit things with it, it will give them the frost effect. And now for the last and the strongest boss in this mod, which is the Ancient Behemoth. This is definitely like the final boss of this mod and it's huge too i mean look at it this dude has 300 health and he has a plethora of different attacks he has the normal attack which is to pick you up and throw you around he also summons these little minions called ash golems around him they each have 50 health and just do regular damage to you he can set you on fire and summon lightning on you and he has a chance to give you the poison 4 effect which drains your health very very quickly and once he gets down to really low health, he starts rapidly regening. You will definitely need the Heaven Sword for this, because he regens really fast. You have to kill him really quickly. But once you do kill him, he drops the Titan Heart. There are three different weapons you can make with this item. Fiery Titan Blade, the Storm Titan Blade, and the Plague Titan Blade. They're all made by combining the heart with one of these core items. The Fire Blade is made by a Molten Core, which is made with a Nether Star, a Blazing Ingot, a Lava Bucket, a Fire Charge, and a Fire Flower. The Fire Flower being a new flower you can just find around the world. The Thunder Blade is made with the Thunder Core, which is just a Nether Star and a Lightning Rod. And the Poison Core is made with a Nether Star, a Cactus, a Poisonous Potato, and a Spider Eye. Now all of these weapons are all have their own unique abilities, but they all have one shared ability that's really cool. Is that when you right click it, it actually turns into one of the other blades. Even though they all have their own recipe, you only actually need to make one of them. Because once you do, you can right click it and turn it into the others. But now I'll go over their individual abilities. The Fiery Blade is kind of obvious what it does, it just sets things on fire. And it does 5 attack damage with 1.5 attack speed. They all have 1.5 attack speed by the way, but they do have different damages. The Storm Titan labels summon lightning on things when you hit them and that does 9 attack damage and the plague blade will give them poison 4 when you hit them and that one does 15 attack damage oh well, when you have the plague blade in your inventory you'll actually be granted a permanent poison immunity effect which as the name would suggest it makes you immune to poison and well that's it for all the bosses in the mod now for our final section we're just going to go over some additional miscellaneous items in the mod there are two new shields you can make here one being the copper shield and one being the brute shield. They both have more durability than the normal shield. The copper one having 900 durability and the brute shield having 1000. The copper shield is made with 4 copper ingots, 2 bronze gear, and 1 regular shield. And the brute shield is made with 5 pieces of fur and 2 tusks. There's an item called the ancient pedestal. Not really sure what it does, it's just kind of a pedestal. It might not do anything, it might just be menace decoration. But you craft it with 6 stone brick walls, 1 stone brick slab, and 1 chiseled stone brick. There's a new type of lantern called the Blood Lantern. It's this cool looking red lantern. I like the look of this thing a lot, I'm not gonna lie. But brightness wise it has the same brightness as a regular lantern. And you craft it by surrounding a blood bottle with iron nuggets. There's a new food called the Grilled Spider Eye. Which as you'd probably expect you just get it by cooking a spider eye. And when eaten it gives you 5 hunger bars. There's another new food called Spicy Stew. Which you make by combining a bowl with a fire flower, any type of mushroom, and a big variety of different things that you see scrolling through here. You can use any one of those things, it won't matter. When you eat this, it will give you 3 hunger bars, and it will also give you regeneration for 20 seconds, and it will also set you on fire for 20 seconds, so I, I wouldn't really recommend eating it. Even more food, we got glowberry pie, which is made by combining a piece of sugar, a glowberry, a wheat, and a milk bucket. And when eaten, it will give you 2 hunger bars, so it's not that great. And next we got a weird piece of food, which is the enchanted meal. You make this with a bowl, enchanted dust, 2 of any kind of flour, and 1 of any mushroom. When you eat it, it will give you 3 hunger bars. It will also give you Absorption 2 and the Enchanted effect for 20 seconds. But the Enchanted effect is this really weird effect that makes your screen look all weird and kind of just throws you around a lot. It also has a weird ability where the more you eat it, the stronger the effects get. There's also this block called the Enchanted Soul Core. Pretty expensive to make, requiring 4 soul soil, 4 enchanted dust, and a wither skeleton skull. But no idea what it does, unfortunately. Again, I'm sorry about not knowing a lot of these things, it's just I don't have much to work off of. And for our very last item in the mod, it is the glow essence. You can make this by putting any glowing item in a crafting table and you get two of them. But if you put a glowstone block, you'll get six of them. And you can combine these with an arrow in a crafting table and make a spectral arrow. So it's just an item to add that crafting recipe in. And well, that's it for the mod.
That is most of the mod, at least. There might be a couple of things that I missed. I tried not to, but there is a lot in this mod, and again, not a lot of info to go off of. Now, this is by far my longest video to date. Previously, my longest video was only 10 minutes long, and this one's almost 25 now. Will probably be 25 minutes after this outro is done. Which 25 minutes isn't even that long by modern YouTube standards, but like, my average video length is only like 4 minutes. So as always, a download link for the mod will be in the description. And if you enjoyed the showcase, leave a like and subscribe to the channel because I got a bunch of videos like this and a bunch more coming. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys when I upload next.